G'day, it's Chris Betcher here, and I'm going to talk to you about the very exciting subject of security. I know it's uh, usually not the sexiest of things to talk about, but I think it's really important, and I want to take you through a couple of things that you can do to make sure your account, and I'm going to use a Google account as an example, but it actually applies to a whole lot of things, um, to make sure it's as secure as possible. Now, it uses a thing I'm going to talk to you about called two-factor authentication. And if you imagine the front door to your house, sometimes a lot of front doors have like a top lock and a bottom lock. And you actually need both keys uh, to turn in both locks simultaneously for the door to open. Uh, it's the same kind of thing here with two-factor authentication. Most of us, when we have an account, have one factor. It's a password. And we type the password in and we get into the account. The trouble is if someone else has that password, they can also type it in and get into the account. So if you get hacked or uh, you know some, some, some password breach and your, your uh, password information gets leaked online, which happens more than you might think, uh, then someone else can get into your account and cause all sorts of havoc. Not a good thing. So it's a good idea to have this thing called a second factor. Um, and let me show you how that works out. So this is a Google account and I'm going to click on my little icon in the corner here and go to this blue button that says my account. Now once you're in here, if you've never looked in here, you should. There's a lot of really interesting, uh, geekily interesting things in here that you probably should be aware of. But one of them is sign in security. So we'll go into there. And we're going to go into this section down here called password and sign in method. And you can see right now that two step verification is turned off, which means the only thing you need to log into this account is a username and password. That's it. Um, we're going to change that. Let's go into this section and get started. And whenever you're about to make a significant uh, change to security, it, it, it does and should ask you for your password. Okay, so we're in. Now, um, for me, it's automatically detected my phone number because I've actually done this before, but you may have to type that in. But stick your phone number in there, make sure you get the right country code. And you have an option of getting a text message or a phone call. I think text messages is easiest. Um, so we'll go with text message for here. And I'll say, try it. Now, while that's doing that th this thing there, uh, over on the side here, this little uh, thing here is actually my phone. And so here it is, 517653. 517653. Okay. And so that's the code that just got texted to me. I can show you there it is right there. Okay. On the phone. So we'll go next. And it validates that pin. It says, yeah, it worked. Fantastic. Turn on two step. Yes. Let's turn it on. So now this account now requires that second factor. It requires another number. To log into this account now, I need to put a password in and then wait for a text message. Okay, and I know that's not super convenient. We'll change that. One thing you just noticed that is up in the corner here, this is where it says my name, Chris. This is the account name. I've now got this little symbol, and that's indicating that the sync is no longer working. Because I just changed the login method to require a second factor, it's saying that those details are now out of date. The, the, the original way I had it with one factor needs to be updated. I'm going to come back and do that in just a sec. just wanted to point that out. Um, once you've done, once you've turned two-factor on, and now it will require a text message in order to log into the system. But what happens if you don't have your phone with you, or what happens if your phone is stolen or lost? Well, you need a backup. So there's this thing called backup codes. So really good idea is your next thing here is to turn that on. So hit the setup button, and it will generate a bunch of backup codes, and these codes will work to log in as the second factor to your account. You still need the password and you need one of these numbers. These numbers only um, are one use only, so if you log in using, say, this first number, then that's used. You can't use it again another time. So that's why I have the checkboxes. You tick them off as you use them. Good idea to sort of you know, keep this in a safe place, even print it out and you know keep it somewhere where you won't lose it, um, but you will need these numbers as a backup. You can hit the print button or hit the download button and actually uh, make a copy of those somewhere safe. Recommend you do that. So I've got the backup codes on now. Now, the trouble with getting a text message is if you're out of range of your service provider or you're overseas or you're somewhere where you can't get a text message, that's not very convenient and you'd hate to be logged out of your account, need to log in and you can't get a text message. So I'm going to show you an alternate way of doing this and it uses an app called Authy. Now, uh, there's a number of apps that do this kind of thing. Um, Authenticator by Google is one of them. The reason I like Authy is it actually synchronizes across phones. So you can actually have it on multiple phones, whereas the, the Google Authenticator is one phone only. 
So let's set that up. So down here you see I've got some alternate second steps. Uh, there's, there's actually a whole bunch of extra ways you can do this. Uh, I'm going to use the Authenticator app. Uh, hit Setup. And it asks me what kind of phone I have. Well, right now I'm using an Android phone, but it does work for iPhone. Let's say Next. And it will generate this little barcode. Now I'm going to take my phone here, right, and um, go into Authy. And just come out of there. Right, and up in the top corner, hit the Overflow menu and say Add Account. And now it will give me... A QR code scanner and all I need to do is point that at that QR code just let it focus for a sec oh, come on focus there you go so I've detected it so it's detected the account and now I say done Oops. I click done on the phone and so now it is generating the codes now that code there 484011 is the code that will be used as a second factor. But you see how it's counting down there? Eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds. That code is only valid for 30 seconds. So imagine, you know, you've somehow guessed my password and you want to log into my account. Well, if you don't have that code in the same 30 second window, then neither of those things are any good to you. So it's, it makes it much more secure. That code will just regenerate every 30 seconds. All right, let's just come out of there. And you'll notice that down the bottom of this list here, uh, the, the one right at the bottom, chris at training.cruxlearning.com, that's the code that was just generated. Now, we still have to uh, just finish the process here. So we'll go next. And we need to verify by tapping on that code and putting in the current uh, 907356 and verifying it. And then it, 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 all the systems talk to each other and says, great, we're done. So now... There you go. So we've now got the Authenticator app as the first port of call. If that doesn't work for some reason, you can revert back and, and receive a text message. If that doesn't work for some reason, you can always use one of the backup codes. So you won't be locked out of your account. The other thing, a lot of people say this is just way too complicated and too inconvenient. I don't want to have to put a code in every time I log in. You don't have to. Um, when you log into a new device, you can actually say that it's a trusted device and it won't ask you again for 30 days. So if it's a computer you're using all the time, don't panic. It's not going to keep asking you for a code. Um, it, it, it will trust that machine and just ask you occasionally to just update the code and make sure it's uh, up to date. All right, so uh, pretty easy. Um, I'm just going to refresh this. Remember I said this is out of date now, so we'll just tap on there and say sign in again. And now you'll see the two-factor in play here. So yes, a change in your account requires you sign in, your, sign in again. Fantastic. Put in my password. Great, and now it asks for the second factor, and you can see over here the second factor is currently 677804, next, and it's gonna go great, fantastic, and that little warning symbol's now gone away. Now, just I just wanna show you how this, it's a practically in action, just I'm gonna open an incognito window, and most of you will probably know that an incognito window is a window that you are not logged into. So this is as though I was an outsider now. So you'll see, I need to log into this account as an outsider. So uh, there you go, it's remembered my password. Um, sorry, my uh, username. I stick in my password. Great, password's correct, but now it needs the second factor. Now I can go over here and go, uh, you know, currently the new one here is 151412. And say done. And there you go, it logs me in because I've had both factors correct. If I tried to do it outside that 30 second window, it wouldn't obviously work. Let me just close that incognito window and show you what would happen, for example, if you weren't using the Authenticator app. Uh, let's just do that. So we'll open another incognito window and we'll try and go to Gmail again. And uh, we'll log in one more time. Okay, put the password in. Okay, now it's asking for the code. Let's say for whatever reason you authenticator wasn't working and Authy wasn't working and you couldn't get that code that we're seeing over on the side there. Um, so we weren't getting any of that information. Uh, what we could do is say try another way to sign in right right here down the bottom. So click that and well if, this, if we don't have access to this we can do the next one. Get a text message with verification. If that doesn't work for some reason we're not in a re receiving zone then you can always use one of your backup codes. And there's also you can also ask Google for help if you need to. So there's a whole bunch of ways that you can um, make, your, make your account way more secure, way more secure. If you really want to dig into this, uh, you might look at a thing called Google Prompt. 
and that uh, lets you add a phone. Um, and I'm not going to do it right now, but uh, you can have a play with this one. If you get a Google prompt to sign in, it won't actually even ask you for a code. It will send a message to your phone that says someone's trying to log into this account. Is that okay? Yes or no? That's actually quite convenient. Um, so check that out. Anyway, that's a little bit of information there about setting up two-factor authentication on your Google account to make it way, way, way more secure. And as you can see, you can also do Dropbox and LastPass and Microsoft and Facebook, like all of these services pretty much support two-factor or two-factor yeah, two verification, uh, making them much more secure. Cheers.